I think you're here because you're wondering about what's going on in Japan spiritually. Right? Japan is known as the graveyard of missions, which means that many missionaries have gone and left after the first term. And, and then we see over you know, 150 years of Protestant missionary work, less than half of 1%. If we were to use the Operation Japan, you know, that prayer book, those who claim to be Christians and those who attend churches are almost always half. You know, I don't know what does that what does that mean? Are they elderly and they can't come anymore, or do they profess faith and not come? But the church attenders are almost always about fifty percent. So we say maybe you know half of one percent are evangelical Christians, but if you look at those statistics, maybe it's as low as 0.25%. It's like what? But why? So we know there's a spiritual battle taking place. And my wife and I, and as a family, we went to uh, Japan in 1996. I was there earlier at the same level, but in 1996, we went to Japan. And on the very first day, we experienced a spiritual battle. Okay, so here's what happened. So we, we arrived in Tokyo. We get to go to the Sen Center in Japan. And I'm unpacking suitcases. And then my wife runs into our room. Richard, Richard, we gotta pray, we gotta pray. It's like, whoa, 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 what's going on? It's like, I have an eerie feeling. I, there's this weird noise coming up, coming down the street. It's like, what, 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 what? So I go to the living room and I could hear it. It was getting louder and louder and louder. And it was saying, Nakimo! Sweet potato man. People are coming to the Lord, and those of us who are burdened for Japan, we think, what's going on in Japan? Why not Japan? And we're all of us are, are praying for revival. When is it going to happen? Or because we do know that there's the, the sovereignty of God, timing issue too, and so there's that balance where there's this urgency, and yet waiting upon the Lord to work because you can't force anyone to believe. Uh, believe, believe. Okay, okay. We wish we could do that. But the Holy Spirit needs to open the eyes of the unbelieving hearts, right, for things to happen. But while there, we learned a lot of things. And so this seminar is going to be part of that, but I'm going to do it as a Reader's Digest condensed version because I want the Bakasi to share. They're with our mission, but they're going out to be part of the solution, too. So, um, the word of God says our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm and for the Japanese you know, saying, I know <laughs> knowing that this is a spiritual work we're, let's let's commit this time to the Lord Lord we are in a battle but you are the victor the victory is already won in Jesus and so we praise you on the side of victory. And so we thank you. We thank you for your victory, for the death on the cross of Lord Jesus Christ. But in the meantime, there's these battles uh, every day. Uh, and we desire to see Japan revived, renewed in spirit. So Lord, have mercy on them. And then give us, continue to give us wisdom and insight into what is going on and how we could battle strategically and effectively. So we commit this seminar to you. I, I pray that it will be beneficial uh, to the body. So thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So the Word of God makes it clear that we are in a spiritual battle. Everyone knows this picture, right? It's all about mm -hmm. tourist books and things like that. Do you know what this is? This is the Kamakura, the Daibutsu. And I remember going there. Have you ever been there? 
right? And you go there, it's like you see people bowing down. And then, then, what doesn't work on that? Okay, so on the bottom corner, there's a little door, right? You go inside, and it's like, it's empty. <laughs> but then you look outside, and people are, but it's empty inside. And yet, people go to the temples all the time, and you see parents, you know, with the kids, you know, they're teaching them what to do. And all over Japan, they're doing the same thing, you know, on ball and school field trips. Where do they go? You know, Osaka people go to Tokyo, and you know, and then vice versa, and they always go to shrines and temples. Yeah. And without thinking, they buy the little amulets, oh, kawaii, so cute, da, 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 da. and they joke around with the fortune, ah, you know, but they're all doing everything. Without thinking, it's kind of like part of the culture, part of what we do. But while I was there, I remember just praying, meditating, I was going through Psalm 115. Oh God, our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. But their idols are silver and gold, made by the hands of men. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but they cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, noses but they cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, feet but they cannot walk, nor can they utter a sound with their throats. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust. I remember reading that. I've read this before, but it was this spe specific time, just praying, and boom, it hit me. That's Japan. The land of eight million gods, Yaoi Rozu. And from infancy, you know, they are, they're bowing to idols that can't see, can't talk, or anything like that. And I remember we were having this couple over. We were having a good time, just... You know, hospitality, building relationship, talking about sports in America and Japan, all this, you know, food. <laughs> and then, as a missionary, I expertly weaved into the spiritual part. <laughs> and then, literally, there's this glaze that went over the husband. And it was so pronounced, I, I felt a chill up my back. You know, and then... I didn't know it at the time, but my wife saw the same thing. She's feeling the same thing, and we're just, we just couldn't wait till they left so that we could debrief. <laughs> you know? So, we, and then afterwards, you know, we talked about sports, and then boom, the light's on. Had a wonderful time. They go home, and Carrie goes, Richard, did you see that? Carrie, did you see that? Are you thinking the same thing? That was so weird. And we were talking to him. But he wasn't there. It was like the weirdest thing. And we've seen that happen over and over again. Not everybody, but you know, enough to know that, okay, that's that's that happens. Some of you may have experienced that too. But it's this. They have eyes but cannot see, ears but cannot hear. And I mean there were times you share the gospel and, and Carrie said, Man, I feel like being saved all over again. You know, that so I'm so clear, so just like this is it. <laughs> Now, of course, it's a spiritual thing. They can't see with their spiritual eyes. And so that's helped shape our prayer in that we pray that their spiritual eyes can see. Because it's not a logical thing. Right? It's not a, you know, this and this and this. And, um, God's spirit has to work. And, it's, and we have to keep trusting in him. But who blinds the unbelieving heart? Satan, right? We know that. So scripture says that. And so, we could almost imagine Satan doing this. And so we pray against the evil one. Who has the victory? See, we, we pray in the stance of victory. We've won. It's not like, oh, I hope, I hope, I hope, and then I hope we win at the end. No, no, no. We, we already know the result. You know, it's like the Super Bowl. We know who's going to win. The Seahawks, no. <laughs> Not this year, right? But could you imagine, right? Or the Lord of the Rings, right? You watch, and then we all want to be on the Hobbit side, right? But if you were working through that full trial, you know, like they're going to die, they're going to die, they're overwhelmed, and yet they escape. We see that, you know, we see the end. We know the end. Knowing that, should we be more bold? You know, should we be not afraid? And sometimes when we talk about spiritual warfare, it is kind of scary. 
But this is happening all over Japan. And it's so part of the culture. They say, it's, well, this, is culture. this is us, to be real Japanese, we have to do this. Now, is that true? Yeah, over hundreds of years, it's become like that. But Christ wants them to become the free Japanese, the real God-intended Japanese, which is not bound up in this. That could clearly see, clearly hear, clearly walk with God. That's what we're hoping for. They are being uh, blinded and tied up at this time. Another big uh, religion is? Shintoism, so we have Buddhism, Shintoism. Oftentimes the Japanese will combine the two, right? Because they're all part of the same, you know, different gods, different focus. And, and this would be more the folk religion. You can think of animism, um, they worship nature, uh, so that's why there's many, many gods. And, you know, it's, it's beautiful, right? <laughs> there's the, the beauty of it, which is attracting, you know? Um, and so we can enjoy the architecture and things like that. But we were uh, you know, talking to different missionaries and did you know that the Old Testament tabernacle and the Shinto shrine, the layout, is almost exactly the same? You know, it's like, where did they get that? Right? Where did they get that? Not from Francis Xavier, right? But maybe <laughs> way back before that, historians, or maybe even before that, through the Silk Road, they heard about the tabernacle, the, the, the Jewish people might have shared the truth. And so, you look at this, this is called a tori. Its color is red. There's only a few religions that has a red gate. You know another religion that paints their doors post red? Judaism, right? You know, and it's related, you know, similar to the tabernacle, you know, could could it be that way back they heard this thing, you know, and if you go through this, they say you're reborn or actually come out, you're, you're rebirth. You know, they, some people say that the, the posts are like the, the legs of a woman, you're being birthed, you know, new birth, new life, and you're cleansed. And, um, but, you know, the cleansing blood of Jesus, we know, we see that in the New Testament, but right? are there elements of truth? But we also know that it's a spiritual dark place, too, where they do worship idols. So you know, Shichigo-san, 753 baby dedication, the dedication. I think, historically, those were hallmarks of a, a healthy baby, you know, like they survived to the third year. <laughs> Spiritually, oftentimes I heard Christians, Japanese would become Christians here, and you know, go back to Japan, they often fall away 80% within three years. So on a spiritual route, there's a real truth there too, but historically, just you know, physically, you know, a three year thing was a big thing, and five years and seven years. And what they would do is they would bring their children to the um, shrines, not the temple, Buddhist temples, Shinto shrines, to dedicate their, their babies. And as a parent, you know, the Bangkok unit, you, know, you love your child, you want them to be blessed, you know, you've had your kids dedicated, right? Lord, bless my child. Well, human nature's that. As parents, Japanese parents, they want to bless their child too, but they don't know any better, so they take them to the shrine and they say, please bless my child. And the priest takes it, yeah, you know, they, they do all that. And they do that at five, seven. Uh, when they become 20 years old as an adult, or every New Year, they go and say, Lord, we want your, or not Lord, God's, God's, we want your blessing. But I was reading 1 Corinthians 10. And this is another one of those times where just the scripture just hits me, right? What do I apply then? That food offered to idols is anything? Or that an idol is anything? No. I apply that what pagan sacrifice they offer to demons not to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons. And I remember getting this chill on my back. It's like, oh, could this be related to Japan? So spiritually, what is happening? A parent brings their child that they love to dedicate them. Because they love the perfection, guidance, you know, good fortune. God has said in his word that he's given the parents the authority to raise the children in the way they should go. 
So at this moment, when they're at the shrine, they're saying, I give my child to you. Okay? Now, according to this verse, what might be behind all the fancy architecture? Demons. So imagine. They're saying, spiritually, demon, bless my child. That's scary, right, if you think of it. So from a demon's perspective, how could they bless this child? From a demon's perspective, what's the best thing they could do for this child? Blind their eyes. From what? From the truth. From who? Jesus. Right? That, their, their greatest enemy is Jesus. The one thing that they just despise and hate I'm going to protect this child from Jesus. With their parents and grandparents, with a little baby that just came out of Asakusa Temple. A shrine. There's a temple there too. But. Okay, so what did our team do? It was so cool. The, the girls on the team, it's just natural. Oh, how cute! <laughs> oh, and the parents are so proud. Yeah, you know, that's a girl. It's, oh, it was just, just. Cute, just beautiful kimono, everything, and oh, congratulations! And and then, and I said, oh, that's one, you know, one of our, our people. He, he's a pastor. And I'm missionary. I didn't say that, but then he's a pastor. Do you mind if he prays a blessing over your child? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so if he prays over this child. Lord, cleanse this child from any wickedness. Of evil. He just countered everything because we had just talked about it. He countered everything that we imagined was happening there spiritually. And they left all happy. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you, God. But that reality was there. We were so happy to, to be able to counter what just happened. You know, and, and they received it. They were happy about it. But what's happening? How many, how many of all Japanese that are coming here have that over them? You know, this this curse, this this spiritual umbilical cord, right? It's a scary thing. So oftentimes when a believer, a Japanese believer, uh, receives Christ, one of the things that we'll share is the spiritual realities. And if there's anything in your past that you may have dedicated to unknowingly or anything, we renounce in Jesus' name. Just, you know. And we did, I did, I, I did that um, for myself. We grew up in a Buddhist home. Um, you know, we know we've been dedicated to all, all that. And so we cut that we renounce any, any spiritual influence on that. And we continue to, to pray about these things. Any, any questions or comments so far? Because these really impacted me at the time. And is the word of God just, you know, one of those... Because we're all praying. What, what are some spiritual? I, I understand that now because my wife and I served in Thailand for four years. Thailand is another very difficult place to reach for Christ. 200 years of foreign missions, and if you include the Catholics, 400 years. Mm -hmm. um, but Thai Buddhism is more about animism. Mm -hmm. And the spirit world there is so much more active than places like here. Mm -hmm. Because the worship is this, this deep experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, I understand what you're yeah, and that whole spiritual reality, the Westerners tend to not, tend to poop it, just, you know. Mm -hmm. But even in Japanese manga and everything, there's a lot of spiritual stuff that they, they see that reality. Mm -hmm. And we can take advantage of that. You know, but also as Christians, realize that this is real. Now, they don't, they're not afraid of that. We, we know better. But, yeah. but these are realities that I thought is... Testimony. Now, so why is there revival in China? Right? I think one of the reasons is because of the Cultural Revolution. Mao Zedong is a communist nation. He destroyed everything. Temples, shrines, churches, everything. Any religious thing. So there was a spiritual vacuum. Right? Well, we're created as spiritual beings and there's this hunger. Where did they go to? And praise God, many of them are coming to Christ. Even now, I think there's more Christians in in China than the population of Japan. <laughs> you know, that type of people all, you know, underground. It's like, whoa, what's going on here? And there's Korea. Why is there revival there? And one of the theories is that, you know, during the Japanese occupation, you know, anything that had to, 
do with anything with the Japanese, you know, Buddhist, Buddhist, Japanese Buddhism. You know, she did nothing. No, no, thank you. And Christianity was there to fill that vacuum. And so many of them was open to Christianity because they, they hated this. And so God uses those things. But I think those are some hints why it's different. Oftentimes, Westerners think of Asians are all the same. Well, how come it's not all? No, <laughs> Thailand is different, Japan is different, Korea. They're all different. And we need to realize that as missionaries, mm -hmm. there's some similarities with the spiritual need, but each culture is different. The boundary, the, the, show, the barriers are different uh, in you know, different countries. Confucianism is also a big factor, and of course not just in Japan, but China and Korea and so forth. What do you think comes out of Confucianism? When you hear Confucianism, any any major teaching out of Confucianism, what might come to mind? Filial piety. Filial piety, which is what? Loyalty of the son to the father. Right? And ancestors, right? We continue to take it over. And Buddhism is, is kind of like a chameleon, too, in that true Buddhist, uh, True Buddhism didn't have ancestor worship, right? But as it traveled north and south, there was a split, big wheel, and little wheel. But they incorporated Confucianism into their teaching. And, oh, yeah, that sounds good, too. <laughs> and of course, Japan Buddhism, Japanese Buddhism, has ancestor worship as part of that. And so there's that influence there. And it's, it's the lie of Genesis 3. Genesis, is it two or three? For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. It's like, how does that relate to the ancestor worship? And I remember talking to this elderly Japanese gentleman, Buddhist, very strong Buddhist. So, you know, Buddhist. And I said, oh, so you think you're a, a god? Oh, no, 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 no. So, so who do you worship at your altar? Oh, my ancestors, my all these uh, grandparents and so when your children die and your grandchildren and great grandchildren who will they be worshiping or who will they be praying to never thought about that before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> me <laughs> right right think about so next so you have the power to lead and guide them to bless them protect them. Never thought of it. It's like, no, I don't have that power. Oh, but you think that they, you know, it's like mm -hmm. it was blew him away. Mm -hmm. it's like, is that the lie of this? That they will become like God? That's part of what, what is happening. But ancestor worship has a stronghold. I mean, that's for my, my family, too. Uh, that's the Nakamura family altar. It's, 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 it's you know, big, handmade, um, over here, you got the the names, you know, and then what's really interesting is this little thing. My parents were really uh, uh, nishing, uh, uh, enthusiastic, gung ho for Nisho Kosekai. So they they did a lot of work, a lot of money, a lot of everything, and so the the headquarters in Tokyo wanted to honor them. So my parents went and they honored them, and they brought back this gift from Visho Kosekai. It was our family guardian deed. <laughs> so they had a big celebration. They placed it in here. And I'm in, I'm in Bible school at that time. <laughs> <laughs> My sister's bedroom is right above the altar. Two days later, later she felt the presence in her room. You know, and she says, she's wide awake. This chill up her back. And she, was, she started getting choked. And, and she's like so scared, so it's like she couldn't even say Jesus, but she's thinking and praying, Jesus, Jesus, save me, help me. She said, boom, in the left. And she contacted all the siblings right away, praying for me, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's a spirituality. We've talked to many Japanese, and there's things like this do happen. You know? Was that just an imagination? But she will tell you. This was real. It was, it was so scary for us. But um, that's not my family. We grew up with this. Another point I thought was this whole Tokugawa regime. 
Are you familiar with shogun, samurai? There's a feudal era, the samurai period. And then in KT68 was a modern period. And that's actually kind of a line. Um, how many of you watched uh, Silence? The movie Silence? Oh, the book's awesome. Huh? Yeah. But then the movie, did, did you get a reaction? I haven't read the movie yet. You haven't read the movie? Or sorry, I've never watched it. <laughs> you know, but did it get you upset? I mean, talk about emotional roller coaster, right? Yeah. It's like, what? Wow, he's coming right back. It's all but in that movie, you get a little sense of what the persecution was like, you know? Would you step on a Fumie? You know? And then he steps on, it's like, no, no, no. But, oh, no, 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 no. And he pulls out a cross and he says, I want you to spit on it and curse it. And he couldn't use it, right? It's like, oh. And you're thinking, what would I do? What would I do? What would I do? What would I do? Oh, boy. But that was a good example of what persecution might have been. Well, it wasn't until the third shogun, Iemitsu, uh, that the level of persecution went exponentially high. And uh, his name's Iemitsu. Nikko, have you heard of Nikko? You know, it's a real beautiful tourist place, to, uh, shrine, and that, that he built. Asakusa, he's the one that refurbished on that one, and all these major ones. Uh, but with Iemitsu, it was outright persecution. Illegal to be a Christian. He moved all the cemeteries into you know, the Buddhist temples. Every year, the whole village was to step on a fumi to renounce anything to do with Christianity. If you were, uh, okay, and then they, he divided the, the villages into five family groups. You know, five, 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 five. The main sole purpose was to sift out the Christians. Of course, there's criminals and things like that too that didn't want to. Out. But they are to report on each other. So let's say you know you guys are the groups, and you become a Christian, okay? And she's dedicated, you know, and so she reports you. You're dead meat. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Your family though is marked for five generations. Oh, wow. Now some scholars think that those families may have become the untouchables, you know. There's many groups that fell into that category, <coughs> Koreans and everything that they put in this. And, but also, and they're not even Christians, right? <laughs> but if you're related to you, they might have been outcast out of their village. You would be rewarded, you know, if you did good. Right? But the rest of the village groups would also be penalized because they had not reported, okay? Mm -hmm. So you think of that atmosphere, it's not love. <laughs> now it's fear, right? And you dare not offend anyone. You don't want to be falsely accused, right? Because <laughs> it's hard to prove, right? Oh, I saw him kneel worshiping Jesus. Well, you don't want to be falsely accused. You want to be on everyone's good side. You are being watched. And I wonder if you've been into uh, Kagiwara Sensei uh, seminar, mm -hmm. the Honne Tatemai. He talked about the Honne Tatemai. What's really on the inside is not what you show on the outside, the Tatemai. So outside, you're like, I, <laughs> you know, I hate that person. I never want to talk about Well, why is that? It's because they want to keep the beats. They don't want any anything. So I think that affected gift giving. You know, when I give you this gift, you're going to say, okay, this costs, you know, uh, $20, and so I'm going to give a gift back about equal or, you know, more value, you know. And so we're, hey, we're good, right? We're even. There's nothing. Hey. And I think that became part of the, the <clears throat> pattern, the culture, just making sure that we're all good, all good, because of a fear of being reported, falsely accused, or anything like that. And I think those roots are still there. It's a fear-based culture, right? Always, what are other people thinking? What are you know, like, oh, let's make sure. And then uh, keep the pace, keep the pace, right? So your family could be falling apart, it's okay. <laughs> you know, right? Because you don't want to share anything that would be taken advantage of by other people. So trust is broken. And I can imagine North Korea's the same way, right? Fear-based, and you don't want to share anything unless you be reported, and the whole family is. It's, I think that's what's happening there. Or you think of with Saddam Hussein, with Iraq, or any of these uh, countries that has dictators. You know, there's a few 
fear phase. But I think that had a heavy influence, the whole Tokugawa thing, until 1868. 1868 was when the Meiji modern period happened. And there's been a new, new era happen. Okay, so 1868 to 2020. If you think of a generation as 40 years, we are like 3.75 generation. Now, I don't know if that means anything to you, but if you read Exodus 20, it says those who worship idols will be cursed to the third and fourth generation, but blessed to a thousand to those who love him. Maybe there's this curse because they say almost every Japanese family probably has blood in their hands, you know, mm -hmm. is guilty of reporting or not saying anything. And we're at the third or fourth generation right now. Could it be that the time of God's blessing is just around the corner? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're hoping. But I do believe that this is part of the reality. And this is an old Edo Jidai, Edo era uh, sign that says uh, Christianity is forbidden. And I think they're giving out like 400 pieces of silver or something for those who, you know, it's like, you, you could become rich by reporting them. So there's that Tokugawa persecution of uh, Fumi. The Fumi is that, that envelope that you step on. The village is broken into five family groups. They didn't. Sorry, I got into talking. Uh, but I think, you know, I, I just made me wonder. Again, reading scripture, it's like you start, I wonder how many generations we are in it. And it came out to world sense for generations. And so I think the key is to, to pray. Pray for spiritual eyes to see. And, and then, you know, for the Lord to lead us into that. So anyways, those are some, some of the things that I learned that could be some of the reasons why Japan is so hard. Uh, but God is raising up a whole new generation of Christians that are saved here and going back, but also missionaries. So I want Chris and Jackie Bankowski to come up to share what they'll be doing. They'll be going to the Tohoku area. Now, if I say Tohoku area, does that bring anything to mind? Fukushima. Fukushima, earthquake, tsunami. Historically, that area was very difficult for the gospel. Very difficult. But now we're hearing that people are seeing visions of God. So I don't know if you know Mitsukura. He went to find those people. Is, are these stories true? He found five separate people that actually saw a vision of Jesus and came to Christ, you know, through, you know, go talk to this missionary. And I never heard that in Japan. I hear that in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow. And so God is working in that area of which now Chris and Jack there. Yes. Yeah, so we'll be going up. We're going to be near Sendai, and we're actually joining a team of Zen missionaries there that are um, partnering with local Japanese churches in their church planting strategy. Um, so, I mean, God calls us the light of the world. You know, you don't light a lamp and put it under a basket, you put it on the stand. And so, we're just going as that light of Christ, you know, and working with them in their church planting strategies, you know, to help raise up Japanese disciples within those churches that already exist that can then go into the surrounding communities and just start new home Bible studies home churches, you know, in those communities, to start a light in those communities. Because the more lights you have around, the brighter they shine, right? Collectively, they shine brighter. And so that's kind of their church planning strategy and what we'll be involved in. And yes, we need lots of prayers. The more we can learn about Japanese history and the culture and just, yeah, the spiritual strongholds, the spiritual darkness that is a reality over there that we're gonna be coming up against. Prayer is huge. We're already praying, I pray almost every day for just our ministry that God has prepared for us, uh, for the Japanese people, just that those strongholds will be broken and the darkness will be dispelled um, through the light of Christ. And I don't know if it was someone who shared it up on stage or if talking around here, but um, someone had said, if you can't do it here, then you can't do it there. And part of, you said that? Oh, yeah, you said that. See? It's, it's. Um, so what God is doing in preparing us to go, uh, sometimes as, um, 
as missionaries, we feel like the support raising is just like the drag that you have to get through to be able to get to where you're supposed to be. But this has really been part of God forming us and preparing us to be over there. And knowing that it is a spiritual battle, we need to grow in our faith and in our prayer life. That's what God has been working on here. And it's been really cool to see. And I have two stories I want to share real briefly. Um, one is uh, Chris and I, we were kind of at our tail end of people that we know to reach out to, to share what we're doing with. And because churches and individuals support missionaries. So I was like, okay, who are we going to talk to? We don't know anybody. What are we going to do? And Chris was like, I'm going to go out and pray. I'll be back later. So he goes out and prays and comes home. And I'm homeschooling the girls and doing stuff around the house. And I'm getting ready to post an update on Instagram. And I see on my phone the little alert come down with an email that says um, a name I don't know, nobody I've ever heard of before. And they're like, I'd like to support you at 100 a month. How do I set this up? And I'm just like, what? I'm all starting to cry. <laughs> Somebody we don't know is going to support us. And he's like, well, yeah, that's what I prayed for. <laughs> so obviously. <laughs> and it was just like, oh my gosh, God is so cool. And um, I've also been attending a women's Bible study at one of our supporting churches and just building relationships and getting to know um, those sisters in Christ. And uh it's, it's hard being in this stage, too, and finding a balance. We know we have a goal we need to meet and things we need to actually do to raise money, um, but then also trusting that God is providing and um, that he has his part to play, too. We're not supposed to do too much. And so I'm praying on the way um, to the Bible study, and I'm just like, Lord, I have faith that you are going to provide for us. and. I just remove any doubt, and you put people in my path who you want to um, want me to talk to, rather than me always looking like, okay, who am I going to talk to? How am I going to bring this up in our conversation? You know, like, hey, we only need you know this much more. And yeah, that's, that's honestly what goes through my head. So, um, so. Uh, I get to Bible study and my aunt goes to that church and I walk up to her and say good morning and hello and the pastor's wife who leads the Bible study walks up to me and she's like, excuse me, would you like to share a little bit about your ministry this morning and uh, what your need is and what you're going to be doing? I'm just like, yes. <laughs> God just brought her up to me and she spoke to me and I shared with everybody, I was like, yeah, she followed the Holy Spirit's nudging to come and ask me, but she didn't know that I was asking for the Lord to provide in some way, and he showed up. And we got almost $200 in new monthly support that morning from people coming up and making new commitments. And, you know, God's just been moving in great ways and um, just relying on his uh, truth in Scripture and that he will move mountains and that he wants us to ask and believe that he'll answer. And so... Uh, we're currently at 83% of our support, and SEND will start our visa process when we reach 90, so we've been praying in faith that'll happen this month. About $105 is 1% to kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at, and um, and then we'll be at, need to be at 100% to leave. So right now we are praying that we'll be able to leave May, June time frame to get out there uh, before summer before their big conferences uh, with all the missionaries and be able to be plugged in. And um, that's kind of where we're at. Well, let me ask this question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Do you have any children? <laughs> oh, yeah, we have two girls. They're 7 and 11, and they are looking forward to going to Japan. And how will you be educated? So right now we are planning on homeschooling. We started that this year to kind of introduce that and get figure things out and how that would work. Uh, it, where we're going to be, there isn't really an affordable international school. So this is kind of the plan we're bringing in and then just being open to what God has once we're there. Yeah, that's, this is kind of a new thing. You know, before, the, you know, CAJ or the Christian Academy, it used to be like the little mecca that you used to say, many Christians. All families go to Tokyo because right, your that kids kind of go thing, there. But, you know, how do you break out of that? And God's given us, you know, homeschool options that, that wasn't thought of so much in years past, but now uh, that's really developed really well with different curriculum and stuff like that. And so God 
It's using that to allow you to teach up there in a very difficult secluded area. Right? It's yeah. Pretty yeah. Pretty yeah. 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 So there's not a lot of schooling options like there is in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Right. So we're kind of limited that way. I might have missed. Maybe you said this already. Have you been to Japan before? Or was We've been traveling on vacation, and then once for the vision trip with Send International to meet the missionaries in the different areas and kind of get a feel for where we might be a good fit. This will be your first time living. Living. Okay, yeah. yeah. And we're planning on going for um, as long as the Lord will keep us, so we're open-minded to being career missionaries. And SEND has us go for four-year terms, though. So we'll come back after four years for our home service and reconnect and then go back again. Well, like Richard said, we just caught a vision that God has given us that he is going to do great things in Japan and he is moving. And yeah. And we know it's people have been praying for more workers to go and we're glad to be some You know, I hear a neat story. OK, so uh, I'm going to put Matt in the spot. In that, okay, so this, we're actually all connected, okay? So when the earthquake happened, um, they closed all the freeways. And so it's the first responders that, you know, gets the bodies out and stuff like that. And, but that allowed the mission group crash to get ready. Once they opened up the freeway, then we were able to go up north. Well, Matt and myself and some others were one of the first ones to go up there and our responsibility was to find a base in the Fukushima area. You know, so we're all praying, right? <laughs> what to do? It's like, where, Lord, where? To... And then we found a camp in Tochigi, which is right at the border. It's like, oh, we might be in Fukushima, but it was obvious that the Lord was opening up this camp. This elderly couple said, we believe the Lord sustained our camp for this very purpose. We want a base here. Hmm. Okay. Right, and so <laughs> then by then I came back on my home service, Matt stayed, and, and then so that developed into a base. We had five bases of which that was one of them. Well, at that time we had groups from all over. We had Buddhist groups, Catholic groups, uh, Jehovah's Witness, Mormons, just every group went out there to help. Do you know what group is, is left now? The Christian Evangelical. And so my um, director went up to Japan, and he was filling his gas up in, in that Fukushima area. And uh, the owner comes up to him and says, do you know who, who built that station? Christians, okay. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but the Christians are still there. They're part of it that still continue on that love, that showing of love and God's you know, grace. And so it continues on. You know, it's not a one-time thing, but it's this whole process that God has been preparing. And I believe that God prepared you guys for this time again, maybe to reap now, starting to reap that time. But the Christians have a wonderful reputation for staying. The Japanese know that. Mm -hmm. You know, and so... Um, you know, in the cassettes in the temporary housing, they, there was a lot of the cults coming. They kicked out all the cults. But we were able to, the Christians were able to stay and do Bible study mm -hmm. in the temporary housing. All the other cults had to leave. Oh, uh, the government uh, so, for those who did the black and study, right? Where's God working? Where's God moving? And well, God, God's doing something in that whole Tohoku area, uh, and maybe it's through that area that uh, revival will happen. Uh, but historically, His time, in His time, in how long did language training? Uh, we do two years of full-time language school, and then two years of part-time language school, part-time learning to do ministry in Japan. Any other questions? And it could be uh, you know, regarding them or ministry in Japan or the things that came up here. Uh, any thought, other, other insights? This is not exhaustive for sure. Uh, some of you may have more insights or a different perspective of things. Yes, we were. There's an interesting comment about China and the cleansing that sort of took place at the Congress. So after World War II, the Emperor of Japan went public saying, I'm not God. So did that have an influence in any way? There was a vacuum there as well in Japan. Well, we do see a little revival bump right after the war. Okay. Right? And so many people came. Unfortunately, those leaders, those people that became Christian then are now dying. That's part of the attrition rate of the, the older mm -hmm. churches. You know, the, they have no one to replace them. Mm -hmm. But there was that, and they, they became leaders. But, but, yeah, now they're dying off. 
And so we're, we're praying for another. So another the secularism sort of took over and, and was thriving, and then the vision sort of receded. I, I think so. I think there was a spiritual hunger, you know, the first not God anymore, and what do we do? And then America, okay. And, but the Christ message is, you know, compelling too. And then the whole government says, you know, industrial, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, America took care of the military expenses, right? So the government was able to actually focus on the infrastructure and, and building up of the company and the nation. And that's been a source of pride and everything, and people jumped into that. And Japan has, you know, number two in the world for a while until China, you know. But incredible, this little nation that was defeated, and, and so it was a source of pride, and, and then the spiritual thing, again, material. Yeah. Uh, Japan's known for quality stuff, and I talked to, you know, company workers, and they know that that's their reputation, too, and it's a source of pride. Uh, yeah. But now, what? I think the second generation or the next generation, they don't want to work like their parents. You know, like, is there more to life? That's a great position to be in. Yes! <laughs> There's more, more fulfilling, more meaningful. And so I, that's why I think this is a time. Uh, where there's the hikikomori problem, and, and there's the freeders and the needers, and, and that keeps evolving into just how it looks. But, but they're trying to find happiness and fulfillment in all these other things. Yes, actually, one girl, I didn't really come to ministry in school by university, and one girl came to Christ, and she got baptized six years ago, in my, uh, in my house, pastor. But actually, she was, she was from Kinder, and she was a victim of the uh, tsunami. Her whole, whole house was washed away. Oh. So through the experience, she said, that she realized anything and everything could be disappeared next month. Mm -hmm. And she said, everything happened for a reason. That's what she said before she believed. Yeah. That's her, like, mouth, like what she learned from the tsunami. Mm -hmm. But when you choose Bibles, and now she's so passionate about God. Mm -hmm. She comes to Bible study every time to read. Yeah, so look what happened. You know, 10 years ago, this was happening, and God's bringing man. Boom. At the perfect time. God's doing the same thing right now. He's already preparing people so that when you arrive, you know, what relationship has God already prepared? Well, that's exciting. That's why the Christian life is so exciting. Yeah, thank you. And then he's reaching out to the next generation, young college students. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? I think we have about 10 minutes. Um, do you think any recommended like books or resources on like the, some of these kind of topics, or maybe in general for just, like ministering to deaf people? The best one. Why? Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, well, it's really interesting. So you listen to Mark Joseph. Mm -hmm. uh, his father, he's one of those legends in Japan who's done lots of great work and stuff. But he wrote a book too. Um, about some of these spiritual realities too. And I, I'm racking my brain to think it's a green book, you know, and it's bilingual. <laughs> um, but I can't remember what it is, but that was, that was a, a, a tool. Um, there's a cultural, spiritual barriers in Japan, it's a small little booklet. I can't remember the author. I should have had preferred that, you know, but um, that's the only resource that comes to mind right now. It's called the Unseen Face of Japan. Ah, I got that one from Dave. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
and so it's just bringing back to the truth of God. Right. And we and, need discernment, prayer, discernment. Each situation is different. Uh, so I, I don't know how to redeem a Buddha. You know, right? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but, okay, but what's behind that is the human need to pay respect, to say goodbye, closure, right? Um, and so we took our mom to, my, my dad passed away. He, he died as a Buddhist. <laughs> but, um, and it's, it's a graveyard is in Seattle. And so for my mom's 90th birthday, she wanted to go. So we all, the whole family went there uh, in honor of my dad and my mom. None of us worshiped and everything, but we, we cleaned the, you know, we cleaned it, put flour, made it beautiful. My mom was so happy. Um, and so we respected it. You know, we didn't say, no, we don't want to do that because we don't want to be close to ancestor worship. None of us did, but to honor. So how, so that was our challenge, how do, how do you honor? When my dad died, he died as a Buddhist. My mom said, we're having a Buddhist funeral. It's like, what do we do? And all the kids are Christians, right? <laughs> 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 so we're all praying, oh, Lord, how do we do this? Um, you want to hear what happened? It's really <laughs> so. So in a, in a Buddhist funeral, there's a picture and then there's an incense, and then there's the Buddhist scroll or picture, right? Well, it just so happened that at the funeral home, there was a TV screen behind that. And we were going to show a slideshow to honor my dad, you know? And so one of the ladies says, oh, could you close that scroll because it's in the way? And the priest said, no. And then she told my brother, and my brother said, don't worry, I'll take care of it. You're going to move that. Now, <laughs> okay, he moved it and he never brought it back, right? Oh, right? And then we were the bookends of the, the funeral. I led it, started it off, and then during the Buddhist time, I was able to announce, uh, from now on, we're going to uh, do the incense offering. For those of you who are uncomfortable, don't feel pressured to go, I'm not going to go up with me and my family, so don't feel like you have to or anything. And you hear some so, <laughs> but those, you know, that did, did, and those that didn't want to, did. And so God, and then, and then my brother shared a mini gospel presentation about the hope we have in Christ at the end. So God was able to help us through that real difficult mm -hmm. challenge. And that God will do that with different other areas, too. But the question is, how do you redeem? My mom's still a Buddhist, but uh, when we first became a Christian, we used to say, you know, uh, that's wrong, or you're going to hell, and blah, blah, blah. It's the wrong thing to say to your <laughs> For anybody. For anybody. For anybody. Yeah. Yeah. But if you think of our own spiritual journey, spiritual testimonies, God uses, like in mine, I was a Buddhist, and, and that's part of my testimony. So I share to my mom, not to deny her Buddhism, but to say, you know, that Buddhism to save her from committing suicide because of the time of depression. And you know, so I'm thankful for God for that. But now there's one more step. One more step, you know, for eternal things. So uh, it, it's not so harsh right now, you know, but when when the time comes and the Holy Spirit moves, then I, I won't have to worry about this stuff. But if I go right off and say, you gotta throw it away and we want to burn that pizza down so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's not ours to burn, you know. Yeah. So we're praying yeah. recently she softened. Now, now she's a little bit of Alzheimer's, and, and so, oh gosh, I'm you know, when you're having difficult, you know, I say, help me, Jesus. But he said, yes, I'm a tasky yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're conditioning her mouth. <laughs> but, but, you know, she's, she's getting it from all the siblings and, and all the grandkids, you know, to, to love Jesus. And so now she's, she, oh, you know, she'll say it, you know. But whether it's not true faith yet, but anyways. But I always ask God for wisdom. You know, Bondori, the dances. How do you, how do you do that? You dance, you participate. Those are challenges um, that we all have. Um, in Thailand, the king of Thailand said, in order to be uh, Thai, is to be Buddhist. Mm -hmm. But we found that Buddhism in Thailand wasn't so much um, religion. Mm -hmm. It was mostly culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want to be Christian because they don't, they're not Thai anymore. Mm -hmm. Japanese offers you. Is it similar? Yes, similar. Okay. Yeah. To be Japanese is to participate in all, to do all these things. But I believe to be true Japanese, as I mentioned, God wants to get to the heart of real true Japanese that's free from all that, sure. to be what they were made to be. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
my wife's parents, then I believe it was better in the Bible, but uh, my wife's grandma passed away, so we had to put this funeral, and which is okay. But so we attend the funeral, and day after, there's a Sunday, so we asked them, you know, and hey, we're going to church today, would you like to join us? And they, they came, oh, sure, and they came to church. <laughs> so Buddhist funeral, whole Buddhist thing, it's not spiritual or Japanese, it's a cultural. With the heart need of closure, you know, and, and a hope, you know, I hope they're going to be okay. <laughs> you know, that, yeah, and that's a reality that they take advantage of. Yeah. Well, keep praying. I think ultimately, it comes down to this, and, tr and then trusting in God's timing. We want to force things, you know, right? but um, yeah, just be faithful for it to rest in Him. So do you mind if I pray for them? Yeah. Yeah. So Lord, we thank you for what you are doing in Japan. We realize that it's been a, an awful nation regarding persecution of your children. Um, but Lord, forgive me. Have mercy. Lord, I pray that you would cause a revival. Um, that they would come to know you, the true God, so that they could be truly, truly Japanese. Uh, how they were intended to be. I pray that you would use the Valkoskis as they go over there to minister in that dark, the hard toll area, but by your spirit, you, you're guiding them there. With that, provide for their needs, help them not to be anxious about these things, but to uh, trust you in your perfect timing, and with that, as they minister to people, to not see the people as dollar signs, but to uh, see them as children to minister to and we trust you for the, the financial needs that come with it and the prayer warrior support that they need. Lord, provide that for them. In your timing, send them on. Lord, remind us also uh, to pray uh, those who you specifically uh, want, part, want them to partner with, uh, uh, make it known. And then for us uh, in general too, uh, we pray for Japan. Help us not to forget the needs of Japan. That is indeed a spiritual worker, but you won. And so with that, we say, praise God. Pray, we praise you for the victory that we have in Christ. Amen. 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 When you walk back in the room, one of the first tables before you walk into the registration and into the main room, we have our table there with our prayer cards and a sign-up if you'd like to receive our newsletter of faith the time to be praying for us. Okay. On that table is a little name sheet. It has my picture in it. It's a black here. <laughs> but if you have uh, any questions or want to follow up with the comments, feel free to take one and use the email. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs>